So today we're discussing what your rehab plan component should include. This, this is really important because this is your step-by-step -step graduated return back to lifting pain-free. Hi guys, Ross here from Fieldwork Health. We're continuing on with our return to gym series. We've already covered how important it is to identify why you have your pain in the first place, and also how important it is to make sure you've got a plan in place to fix the reason why you have your pain. So identifying is the first one, and actually fixing the problem is number two. The first thing that your rehab plan needs to have is to make sure that you're actually doing no additional harm to the area. We commonly see that people have exercise in their program that conflict with the injury that they have. So we normally have to modify, regress or change or sometimes even cut out completely for a short period of time certain exercises to make sure the healing process can take place. We need to keep on making sure that you're using the areas of your body that are actually not painful. So if you have a shoulder pain, we still wanna be loading your lower body, your midsection, and particularly even your other side of your body as well to make sure that you are still carrying on your strength gains or also your training conditioning for those areas. It's really, really important to have um, a program that covers the rest of your areas of your body as well. When you start your rehab program, we wanna make sure that you start slow. We wanna make sure that there are no flare-ups or minimizing the flare-ups the best that we can when you are doing a movement that has previously been painful. Your body remembers pain really, really well. So we wanna make sure that we're giving you stuff that your body thinks is a safe thing to do and add more things onto your list of exercises or rehab once your body gets more competent to do it. We typically start with the movement first. So if it's a squat based movement, we'll typically get you doing a body weight squat into different depths to make sure we're getting the, the movement done number one without pain for number two. Load them comes after you doing pain free movements. Start gradual. We want to see that you're on a daily or weekly basis that you're getting more and more things to do. If we skip ahead too soon or progress you too rapidly, we don't know whether that new movement or new load is going to cause you issues with your recovery timeframes of your problem. The next most important thing is to differentiate between what good pain feels like and what not good pain feels like. Good pain is things like DOMS, delayed onset muscular soreness or training discomfort. You normally feel that the day after or two days after you've done a, a workout. That's what we classify as, as good pain. Not good pain is things that you have which is more irritation, aggravation of your consisting problem. That can be referred pain down into um, certain areas where you had it before. It can be irritation, uh, heat or redness or swelling, those kind of things. We want to differentiate between that type of pain because it typically means that what you've done in your program may have been a little bit too much at that particular day for that particular structure. And lastly, keep it simple, stupid to a certain extent. Don't make it complicated. Don't add too many things at once. Don't change too many variables. We find that if you change all these things all too often and you have a problem or a flare up, we don't know which parameter or which combination of your parameters that you actually have changed that are causing you the problem. For example, if you've done some simple exercises that you've done at about 50% loading, if you've increased the weight of all those exercises and added two or three additional exercises onto your program and also done two or three days worth of extra training in that week, we don't know whether it's an increase in the actual intensity, it's an increase in the number of exercises, or if it's an increase in the frequency that you've done that would potentially cause you a flare. So keep it simple, add one new thing per training session to really identify if it is gonna be good for you or not. So that about wraps up all the key components that you should have in your rehab um, plan. Go slow, get good advice, and make sure you execute the plan. That's the most important part. And communicate readily with your health provider as well, or your rehab specialist. The information that you give us is really, really helpful to make sure that we can make good changes and progress really well, whether you are doing really good or having some issues with your program.